Hello folks, in this video we're going to discuss SU Podium's Caustics option, which is a relatively undocumented and probably rarely utilized feature in the SU Podium toolset. The Caustics option is found in the Options dialog under the Environment tab. Right here, it's a simple on-off switch. Um, but there's actually quite a bit of additional information necessary to get the feature working effectively, and this tutorial will involve some pretty simple preset editing. Um, so let me start off with an explanation of caustics, and then we're going to go over a couple of examples of how to use the feature in your projects. Alright, so if you don't know what the option is for, caustics usually refers to the pattern projected onto nearby surfaces when light either reflects off of or refracts through curved surfaces like glass or water. So one example are the highlights you see on a table or countertop when a strong directional light passes through a glass of water a wine glass or a tumbler, and what happens is the light is refracted through the water and focused onto a nearby surface. All right, a second example is the shimmering wave patterns that you see in or around a swimming pool or body of water. So for example, we've got this photo of a bridge, the sunlight is hitting the surface of the water, and you see on the underside of the bridge, these are caustic reflections. And then these two, underwater in a swimming pool, a familiar ripple pattern on the bottom. And then this one is Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. We see there's a strong light source above the aquarium tank and it's casting these caustic projections down onto the floor of the tunnel. All right, so for this tutorial, we're not gonna be looking at up close glass caustics at all. Uh, in architectural rendering, you're generally not gonna be close enough to a glass for this to really be an important feature of a render. Um, and I wouldn't really recommend trying to use SU Podium for this sort of caustics. I don't want you to think that just because you're doing a kitchen render and there's a glass vessel sitting on the kitchen table or something like that, you need to turn caustics on. In fact, my recommendation would be the opposite. I would say only turn the caustics option on if you're very specifically intending that to be a feature of the render. Uh, if you're just doing interior design renders and there's a glass sitting on the table, it's going to look just fine with caustics off. Most of the time, there's not a strong enough directional light in an interior for you to even notice or see the caustics. And in interior design renders, you're going to be so far away from that glass anyway that it would really only amount to a couple of pixels in the image. So we're not going to be looking at glass caustics. Instead, we're going to look at two exterior examples um, with sunlight hitting a body of water. So we're going to be looking at an exterior scene where there's direct sunlight hitting this little pool of water and we're going to look at how to get these reflections up on the walls here. And then for the second example, I just did a loose replication of that shed aquarium scene. Um, and so I'm going to go through how I created this image. This second example does require quite a bit of post-processing. I was not able to accurately replicate this caustic pattern directly out of SU Podium. But I'm going to show you some post-processing tips and sort of walk you through the steps that I took to get to this final illustration. It's not like a perfect photorealistic representation of Shed Aquarium, but I think the final image is a, a pretty neat looking illustration. So we'll go through this example first and then spend some time breaking down this scene. All right, I've got this exterior scene open, and the idea here is to see whether caustics will make any difference in the image. I'm thinking because we have this strong sunlight hitting the water and a nearby wall, it's gonna be similar to those two bridge images that I showed you with the caustic reflections up on the cement here. So the first thing you need to know about caustics is it only works on curved surfaces. Um, that includes water ripples, but obviously in this scene, we don't have actual rippled geometry, we only have a flat plane with a texture on it. So in order for caustics to work with a water texture, you need to make sure there's bump depth on the material. So if I grab the eyedropper and color pick this surface, the water settings are diffuse 10, 40, transparency, reflection 50, refraction is set to water, and then I've got the bump depth set to nine. I tried a few different values here and it didn't seem to make a huge difference to the result, so I left it at nine. Um, this is actually not a Podium Browser texture, it's just one of the SketchUp standard 
materials. So in the materials interface, I go to water and I choose the water light blue. I may have changed the texture size a little bit, but these are the settings that I used. You can use anything you want, but if you're gonna use caustics, the one thing that you need to know is it has to have a bump depth. And I used a bump value of nine here. Now, a second point to know is that the sun needs to be turned on. So caustic sort of relies on a strong directional light source to hit the water and produce those caustic reflections. So if the sun is off, we're only getting ambient light in this scene and we're not gonna see any strong caustics. Um, I did try a few tests where I tried to create caustic reflections with LEM materials, and I wasn't having a lot of good luck with it. Uh, there may be a way to do that with SU Podium, but I haven't figured out ideal settings for, for using caustics with artificial lights. So for now, we're going to say, make sure the sun is turned on, especially in this exterior scene. That's the best way to use caustics in a setting like this. Okay, so the first set of test renders that I made with this scene was first with exterior default preset and caustics turned off, and then I turned caustics on and I wanted to see if the default caustic settings would make any difference. So I'm using the exterior default preset, viewport resolution, under environment I have podium physical sky one selected, and I have the intensity up at 84 and the exposure at its default value. So the first try was caustics off, and then the second try was caustics on, and this is what I came up with. So this was the exterior default image with no caustics. And this was the result with caustics turned on. So it's not quite the dramatic difference we were hoping for, but there is a difference, and I do think it improves the image. So I'll go back to the original. In the no caustics version, you can see the shadow beneath the hammock is completely dark. It's a flat shadow. And then I also want you to pay attention to this bottom left corner of the water. And when I turn the caustics on, two things are going to happen. First, we're getting reflected sunlight off the water onto the wall. So we're gaining some subtlety and nuance in this shadow area. Instead of a flat shadow, we're getting some bounced light up underneath there. And the second thing is this section of water that doesn't really appear realistic at all, um, where it almost looks like a slab of ice instead of the surface of water. When we turn caustics on, we're starting to gain some definition. The water becomes more see-through. We're seeing the this slight section of wall beneath the water, and we're seeing some bounced light coming into that area of the shallow pool. Okay, so the default caustics, even though we're not getting well-defined ripple reflections. We are getting bounced light on the wall, which is a slight improvement. I decided to also try it with the exterior high preset, um, and there wasn't much of a difference. So this was the exterior high preset with no caustics. And then I tried exterior high with caustics turned on. And again, we're getting that bounced light. It's a little bit less splotchy than it was in the default version. So it is an improvement, just not a drastic one. And again, we're getting some additional bounce light down here in the pool. So this is what SU Podium's default caustic settings get you. It's a slight improvement over the no caustics version, um, but I think we can do better. And the way we're gonna do that is to open up some of the preset files and modify some of the caustics values. So we'll go ahead and do that in the next section. All right, so as we saw at the end of the last section, by turning on caustics in the SE Podium options dialog, we do improve the image slightly, but I think we can do better. And so what I did after this was opened up the SE Podium exterior render presets to see if there were any options pertaining to caustics. And as it happens, there are. So we're gonna take a look at those settings. And the easiest way to do this is to open the presets in a text editor. So. If you're on a Windows machine, go to the Windows C drive, switch to the View tab, and make sure Hidden Items is checked. You'll need to show Hidden Items in order to find the presets. Then go to Users, click your User Account folder, App Data, Roaming, under SketchUp, SketchUp 2021, SketchUp, Plugins, SC Podium version 2.6, and then Presets. All the render presets are here in this folder. I will put the Mac file path on an overlay. 
and we're gonna look at the exterior default and exterior high presets. But one thing you should do when you edit the preset files is to save a copy in case you make changes that you don't like, you always have a backup. So I'm gonna copy these, paste, and I'm just gonna change the name of this one to exterior default caustics and exterior high caustics. And then I'm gonna open both of these in a text editor. I use Notepad++, but any text editor will work, including just plain old Notepad, or if you're on a Mac, text edit. So I'm gonna select both of these, edit with Notepad++, and now we see all the variables that are in the SU Podium preset files. So I did a little research, and what I found out was that the variables that relate to caustics are these set of variables right here, starting with var c photons, and ending with C high. Um, and something else that I realized is that these variables are only present in the exterior high preset. They're not in the exterior default preset. So if you want to use caustics with the exterior default preset and you want to modify the values, you have to copy these settings from the exterior high into the exterior default preset file. That's not difficult. I just select all these variables here go over to exterior default and we can paste them anywhere in the preset file. It's probably not a bad idea to label them caustics. And then you can modify those values in the exterior default preset, just like you would in the exterior high. So I was able to find a little bit of information about what these values mean in the documentation for SE Podium's render engine. I don't have a real clear understanding of these final three values, and when I was testing, changing these parameters didn't seem to have much of an effect on the render, but these first three are pretty easy to understand. So this first value, C photons, is the number of caustic photons that will be used by the render engine. So if you increase the number of photons here, it increases the render time, but it also increases the definition of the caustics results. I'm not sure why this value is negative, but it does need to stay negative. So if you want to increase the number of caustics photons, you would basically leave the negative there and increase this, say, from 100,000 to 500,000, for example, means we're going from 100,000 caustic photons to 500,000 caustic photons. Set that back to 1 for the time being. The CN value has a blurring effect. so. If you increase this value, it blurs the caustics photons together and sort of eliminates splotchiness and makes the result a little bit smoother. If you decrease this value, it actually makes the caustics sharper. Now the problem with that is if you decrease this value but you don't have enough caustics photons, there will be gaps between the caustics and the result will sort of look grainy. So you sort of need to find a balance between these two values. In most of my tests, I actually left the blurring value at 600 and just increased the C photons to make the caustics result a little bit more accurate. But if you don't have a really fast computer, you might be better off increasing the blur and that would sort of smooth out the caustics result. This last variable, cmult, is just a global multiplier. Increasing this value increases the brightness of the caustics. So if you want the caustics to be more visible in your render, you can increase this. Most of the tests that I did, I actually changed this value to 2 so that the caustics show up a little bit better. Um, this one's pretty easy to understand. It doesn't have any impact on performance. It's just an intensity value for the caustics photons. All right, so I'm gonna flip over to Photoshop and show you guys what happens when we increase the value of this C photons attribute. Out of all the parameters here, this is one that has the most impact on the overall quality of the caustics result. So let's take a look at the test renders. Okay, I've got that same test render open up from before with the default caustic settings, and we're gonna take a look at what happens when you increase the C photons value. The other thing I did for these test renders was increase the C malt to two, and remember that's just an intensity multiplier that makes the caustics brighter. So the main issue with this render is that the caustics are not well defined, and I thought this section of the water down here in the bottom left didn't really look that good, but we did see that it improved a little bit when we turned the caustics on, so we're gonna see how that starts to look even better when we increase the C photons value. So the default setting is 100,000 caustics photons, and here's what happens when we increase that value to 500,000. 
And remember, I also increased the multiplier to two, so that makes the caustics brighter. And then we go to one million caustics photons, five million, 10 million, 30 million, and 90 million. And all these increases do increase the render time. So I think there starts to be a point of diminishing returns where the render really isn't getting any visibly better, but the render time is increasing. And I would say that cutoff was probably between five and 10 million. I think the jump from 1 million to 5 million caustic samples is still a pretty noticeable improvement. The caustics on the wall sort of go from these soft, splotchy looking points of light and then at 5 million, they are looking definitely a little bit better defined. And then when we go to 10 million, that's even more true. Um, but after 10 million, you know, at 30 and 90, the caustics are getting a little bit sharper. But, you know, it's up to you to decide whether or not that increase in render time is worth it. You just have to play around with those values and determine what your computer can handle and whether or not it's actually helping the render. Um, so that sort of brings us around to an overall question as to whether or not Caustics is worth turning on and messing with in SU Podium. And I think in certain situations like this exterior, the answer is definitely yes. Even though it took me five or 10 minutes to explain, in practice, it doesn't really take long to go into the Environment tab, turn on Caustics, then open up a render preset in a text editor and change the photons to the number of samples that you want. So let's say 30 million, and maybe we want the multiplier to be two to increase the brightness, save it, and then you're ready to go back to Podium and make that render. And ultimately, if we take a look at one final comparison between an image with no caustics and an image with 30 million caustic samples, there is quite a significant visual difference. So we're getting a lot of additional bounced light on the wall. Beneath the hammock, we're seeing these nice reflections. And I think most importantly, this water just looks significantly improved. Without the caustics, it just sort of looks flat um, and doesn't have enough complexity. When we turn caustics on, we're getting all these nice reflections beneath the surface, uh, and it just really improves the look of that pool of water. So overall, if you're in a situation where you're creating an outdoor render with direct sunlight and water, you may want to think about opening up one of the preset files bumping up the caustics photons and turning caustics on in your render. Um, Cause as we've seen, it can give us some really nice nuance, add a little bit of subtlety to the lighting. Um, and overall, it's just something worth knowing and experimenting with if you wanna get the most out of SU Podium. All right, so I am gonna end this section of the video here because I think that's a pretty good introduction to how to get caustics working in SU Podium. But within the next week or two, I will upload a part two covering this aquarium image, how I set up the scene in SketchUp, and then also the final post-processing that was needed to get this underwater caustics look. All right, so thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.